And so in the book, we put in this four-part diagram that shows you how headward erosion can lead to stream piracy. And in the first block in the upper left, you can see a sluggish river labeled A, but a very steep gradient river labeled B. And B is going to lengthen its channel like you see in the second block. There. And eventually, that channel is going to lengthen into the river labeled A. And you can see that a number three down there is actually broken through and captured. And finally, a number four, you can get a situation like we have today in the Grand Canyon. That's how headward erosion works. So if we look back at our digital elevation map, after the headward erosion and the stream piracy, we created a drainage that now flowed in the direction of the arrows point and progressively went downstream into the Grand Wash Cliffs. And that's how we could get the Colorado River that we see today. Now, it was only 10 years after the symposium that most geologists agreed that that old river on the right-hand side probably did not go to the Gulf of Mexico. But the idea had been born that rivers could be developed from two separate systems. And this was the idea that led to a second symposium in the year 2000. And at this time, 70 geologists were in attendance. How's that for inflation? Um, you know, it even happens with geologists. I was one of those geologists, and I was very pleased to be a part of it and to be there and observe how it all worked. We did two field trips uh, at this symposium. And what I'm going to share with you now are some of the new ideas related to how the Grand Canyon came to be. If you look at the first one, the age of the river in the canyon, what I put here is old and young. And I think there are parts of the Grand Canyon that could be significantly older than other parts. We have cemented the idea that the river once went the other way. And I'll show you some diagrams about that. Edward erosion and stream piracy are still very valid theories. And um, Blackwelder's idea of a late spillover has been, become more popular. And one of the most exciting things is that during the ice age, the rate of deepening has really increased in the Grand Canyon. And I'll share some ideas of that. So we have these brand new paleogeographic maps. You remember the very ancient one that I showed you with just the black arrows and the white background. These maps are created by Dr. Ron Blakey, who's a resident here in Sedona. And um, what he does is he makes these on a computer. And you can see the four corners area right in the ocean there. And that's going to be in that position for all the diagrams I'm going to show you right up to the present. This is what the geography of the Southwest looked like 80 million years ago. And the reason I put this in here is because 80 million years ago, the Grand Canyon region was under sea level. And that means there could be no Grand Canyon, there could be no Colorado River. And we've actually given names to these things. This is called the Manco Sea. The mountains up in Utah were called the Severe Highlands. The, the highlands in uh, Arizona were called the Mugion Highlands after our very own Mugion Rim. And uh, one thing that I'm going to do in all these diagrams is I'm going to show you where the modern Grand Canyon is located today. So I have drawn in there in red the modern shape of the Grand Canyon. So you'll be able to tell where the Grand Canyon is as this landscape changes through time. If you can look at that old diagram there, what you see is that there were very, very low land rivers that were making their way to the sea. Now just 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs went extinct, this is what the landscape looked like. And I want to draw your attention to those rivers that are flowing to the northeast. This is not a controversial idea with geologists today. All geologists believe that this geography existed based on many, many lines of evidence. But I just want you to recognize that these rivers are flowing in the opposite direction the Colorado River goes today. The Rocky Mountains were just beginning to come up 65 million years ago. And if you look at one of those branches of this ancient river system, you can see that the Grand Canyon today is located along what might have been there. And this is where the idea that the river might have gone the other way when it was first born comes from. Today in South America, we have the same exact landscape. If you think of the Andes Mountains over there in the left, the Andes Mountains could be like the Mokiam Highlands, and when you see those rivers heading to the Amazon, I've even put in a little Grand Canyon there to show you <laughs> where topographically the Grand Canyon would be located in this scenario. So by 40 million years ago, these great lakes had formed in Utah, and Wyoming, and Colorado. In fact, there's a lot of oil shale that comes from rocks of this age it's because of these lakes that were up there. This was the geography at that time. 
And we have evidence for these lakes in places like Bryce Canyon National Park. If you look at where one of those farms of the lake is, it's right over Bryce Canyon National Park. So we think that rivers were still coming from the south, going to the north. There's the present uh, form of the Grand Canyon. By 30 million years ago, we started to form many visible volcanic fields uh, uh, here on the Colorado Plateau. And that big yellow thing in the middle is a giant dune field that's suspected to have existed at this time. And we don't have any rocks uh, in the Grand Canyon region to tell us what rivers we're doing. If you notice the rivers are conveniently left out in the Grand Canyon region for this age, we just don't know. But that's where the Grand Canyon is today in this scenario. By 15 million years ago, the House Mountain volcano was erupting in the Sedona area. The muggy on rim was in existence, and we're starting to form a few lakes on the plateau. And we think that there was interior drainage on the plateau. That means that if there was any rivers at all, they weren't going to the sea, they were going onto the plateau surface and forming these lakes there. And right here in the Sedona area, we actually have a gravel that sits at the base of the Mogollon Ring called the Beaver Tail Butte Gravel. And I found that gravel, along with other geologists before me, below the volcanics of House Mountain. So that suggests that the Mogollon Ring was in existence 15 million years ago. And then by six million years ago, this is the big date for the Grand Canyon. We have a series of lakes located on the plateau, and you can see some of them there. That lake near Las Vegas, you see over there on the far left, that's where the Muddy Creek deposits accumulated. And uh, some people think that some of these lakes spilled over and caused the Grand Canyon to form. And I'll just put the Grand Canyon in there right now. And it is possible that Blackwater's idea of lakes overflowing did help establish the course of the river although some geologists aren't so sure. And there's the landscape we have today. That's what we actually see. The Mogollon Highlands down in Phoenix and Tucson have been vaulted down into the Basin Range province, and you can see the Grand Canyon located right there today. So that's how this landscape probably evolved without thinking too much about some of the details. You know, when you look at the Grand Canyon, it's interesting to note that half of its depth has probably been achieved in just the last two to three million years. In other words, if you have come to this lecture two to three million years ago, we'd only have half of the depth of the Grand Canyon to talk about. And that's because in the last two to three million years, there have been glaciers melting in Colorado and Wyoming when that water has run down the river. It has picked up those big boulders that we talked about earlier, and those boulders have physically chiseled their way down into this landscape. I'd like to just talk about one other interesting aspect of the canyon's history, and that's beginning about 630,000 years ago when a giant lava field was erupted inside the Grand Canyon. And here at Whitmore Wash, you can see the evidence for some of these spectacular lava flows that spilled down literally just half a million years ago, 400,000, 500,000 years ago, and filled in some of the topography of the Grand Canyon. On the left there, you can see where a lava flow was erupted on the rim and came down into an existing canyon. And on the right, you can actually see where a big side canyon was completely filled in with lava. And one of the things that geologists have discovered